<clears throat> Alright, I believe we left off. Uh, I think we had just arrested a guy. And we have one more um, person to see that worked for the, the company. <laughs> I don't remember what it was called. Heat. Insta heat or something like that. Let's see what's going on. I wonder if I can get in that car. I can. <laughs> oh my gosh! Alright. In the police wagon! I can't see where <laughs> very well what's in front of me. It's like the war all over again. Did you fight near a bunch of geysers? Alright, let's find this guy. He is this way. Let's run over our partner. Is that him? Hello. <laughs> Oops! I kind of killed him. <laughs> oh, oh, no, there it is. Don't get in the way this time. Crash through that sign too. Are you Matthew Ryan? Who's asking? Detective Phelps and Biggs, arson squad. Arson? You heard the man. I'll just put this stuff in the car and I'll be right with you. Hold it, Ryan. I said, son of a bitch. <laughs> Those are GI's backyards in the The damage is only cosmetic. He's a one-man wrecking ball. Move in. I'll take out the van. He's going to kill those men. They'll get out of the way. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll kill them. Close, Close in, them. Phelps. We need to take Ryan down before he hurts somebody. He's jealous. I wanted to kill those men. Close He's got an arson-related assault charge and he's running. Running don't mean nothing. We gotta get this guy in the room before we can get an angle on him. This man has got to be stopped. I'm going for the tires. That ought to slow the son of a bitch down. My partner just kind of kept running. I was scared. You got a reason to be scared, Ryan? Matthew Ryan, I'm arresting you on suspicion of committing a series of arsons. You don't run because you're just scared. We have three suspects. As much as I'd like it to be, Chapman, I think it's one of the other two guys. Let's get to the station and close this case. All right. <clears throat> get out of here. It's Anne's gray. Take it easy, Phelps. I'd rather get there in one piece. Well, then you're in the wrong car. Any central unit, meet the officer, a hit run felony at 6th and Alvarado. Any unit able to handle, code 2 identify. You're gonna drive like this at least we can. 
At least use the siren, is that what you said? I would if I knew how. <laughs> Jesus, Cole, this isn't a game. Do you ever shut Don't up? play mind games with the four people. <laughs> <laughs> Can we try not to own the people who pay our salaries? <laughs> I have two suspects. Phelps, you got nothing. Biggs, Ryan's waiting for you in interview one. Farley's in two. Hey, Hopkins, you practicing your asshole routine again? Come on, Phelps. <laughs> You're the reason brothers and sisters should have married. Save yourself some time and get this thing off your chest. <laughs> If that's your opening gambit, you better try again. So you want to change the world, Ryan? Yes, I do. So does every reasonable person. And you're doing your part? Yes, I am. Does that include sabotaging water heaters to destroy a company? I have no idea what you're talking about. <clears throat> Let's look at our evidence. Oh, we got a lot of evidence. Um. <clears throat> Is Ryan who we're talking to? Yes. This is industrial sabotage, Brian. It's all part of your campaign. You're delusional, detective. What campaign? Uh, well. Your locker is full of pamphlets. Clemens told us how you were always foisting them on people. Sure. I spread the pamphlets. A guy has to do something. Insta-heat heaters break down every day. They're still peddling the same lousy design that they lifted from Hephaestos. Insta-heat bought out Hephaestos? Them, Vulcan, Pyro, and a bunch of other companies. And you still work for them? A guy has to work. And the directors of the company. How do you feel about them these days? You work it out. You know how to reverse a diaphragm in the regulator valve of a Model 70 heater? No, I don't. <clears throat> oh, man. Let's look at this. You expect me to believe that, Ryan. I could do it myself. Believe whatever you want, Flatfoot. You're part of the conspiracy. 
What can you tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Nothing. I think Suburban is a front for your anarchist buddies. They're arranging for people to be out of town while you burn their houses down. Suburban? What's that got to do with me? That's Farley's bilk. He's the one with the cozy agreement with those fascists. <clears throat> oh, that's a clue now. You have a history of violence. I have no such thing. How exactly are you gonna prove that? That's... Do you know how easy it is for a cop to prove that you've had history of violence? This guy's an idiot, and he looks like an idiot. You were charged with attempted murder, Brian. It was a court case. No criminal liability was the verdict. They said that they couldn't have known that the faulty heater installation would cause a fire. All I know is I lost my whole family. And the company that was responsible got away with it. What would you do? Which company? As Fastos Water Heater Company. <clears throat> That's it for the moment, Brian. So I can go? Sure. As soon as your red friends storm the building and carry you out, you'll keep your seat until we decide how long to lock you up for, knucklehead. I think Ryan is our man, but procedure says we eliminate all of the suspects. Let's speak to Varley. Where's the other? Where's the other? The nerve of some people. Okay, I think it's this way. Is this it? I was door knocking all morning, but I got a maiden's car. Hello. We have Matthew Ryan in custody, Varley. I think all we need to do is ask him about this, and he'll rat you out. Fuck Ryan, that pinko bastard. Have you ever worked on a place on Rosewood Avenue? Family by the name of Sawyer? Maybe. I, I'm from out of town. I go where they send me. I, I, I don't do a lot of repairs, though. I'm, I'm flat out on new installations. Uh... What? What just happened? God damn this stupid... I don't know why that gets priority over my game, but whatever. I didn't even hear what he said. What did we ask him? I've already totally forgot. Oh, whether he worked on that house, the Stefan's house, Stefan's or whatever. I think it was them, or was it the other one? The Sawyer family, that's right. Well, I guess we can say he's lying. I didn't hear what he said, so... He's why are from you out of town. Me, Barley? If Suburban wants their new installations completed, why are you bothering with Rex like the Sawyer house? So I'm lying just because I can't remember if I was there or not? <laughs> How can you prove that I was? Your name is on the inside door of their water heater. Okay. You got me there. Suburban... Yeah, they wanted that guy out. Sawyer kept complaining about not being able to get his heater service, so they threw in a free service as a sweep. I think he played him, though. Because he still wouldn't sell. Word is, you're in the pocket of some property developer? <laughs> Never. I got principles. How 
How did Suburban put the squeeze on you? Did they find out about your record? There's no way you can link me to Suburban. You're wasting your time. I guess just this. Brian says you offered to cut him in on the kickbacks they were offering. I'll testify in court. Suburban, they got real time pressure on getting some of the big developments finished. There's some big date that they can't afford to miss. So yeah, I took the money, but so did a lot of guys, all right? Carpenters, electricians, plumbers. It's no big conspiracy. <laughs> okay. What would reversing the diaphragm of an Insta Heat Model 70 do? Yeah, I made that mistake before. You get a big bang when you turn the pilot back on. So you didn't deliberately sabotage the water heater at the Sawyer house? No, I did not. You out of your mind? Looks like you did. I don't know if I have any evidence for it, though. It doesn't say if this one's tampered with. I don't believe you, Varley. I think Suburban wants homeowners who don't want to sell out of the way. I think you're out of your mind. Where is the evidence that I have done anything to contribute to this fire? Huh? Oh, man, I don't know. You're saying I'm some kind God. of psycho for hire? It's not true. I think it's Varley. Hmm. He's the most suspicious acting. The other guy is just an idiot. This guy's super suspicious. Reginald Varley? I'm charging you with committing a series of arsons and for the murders of Hank Sawyer, Edwina Sawyer, Henry Sawyer, and Jessica Sawyer. I'm no cold-blooded criminal. I could never burn up a whole family in their home. How is it? No, just keep your mouth shut and listen to me for a second. Uh-oh. How is it you can bring no less than three suspects into my station? conduct extensive interviews, sift through mountains of evidence with Lynch and Pinker, and still manage to charge the wrong fucking guy. Oops. <laughs> I took a chance on you, Phelps. People said I was crazy, and you made me look like a jerk. You may not be much of an arson investigator, but I hear you're merciless on the beat. Get going. Oops. <laughs> well then. <laughs> You're two blocks behind first and second. We have more buildings to clear. You know our orders, There's Sergeant. There's barely a building left standing or not on fire in your zone, Cole. Is your sector full of Japs? Questioning my command. The captain doesn't want anyone falling behind. 
Tell the captain we will join him when the job is done. Just give us the word, Sarge. We'll take care of him. He should be sectioned. That Jap lover's a fucking liability. We're here to kill Japs, not our own people. Starcross, son of a bitch. No one wants to serve under him. He's bad fucking luck. Can it? We have a job to do here. If I can live with it, you can too. House fire. Bad one. At least four Vicks. Get out there and find out what you can. The address is 650 North Hobart. There he is, the cop in the newspapers. You should be ashamed of yourself, young man. Get out of my way, Drunk please. All yeah, the bums are gonna swipe at me. Put him down with my sap. We bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. I got a call back for that universal tourist line. Beat her up so bad. I found him. No, the light's green. Sorry, sir. Police oh, officer, your I need your buster. car. A oh, note on my life? You just gave it to me. Thank you. seeing so many houses like oh my god we are all over the place hey there to steal someone else's car. Oh, here's one just like it.
can't destroy the benches. Hey there. You guys better see this. I hope you have strong stomachs. Oh great, what are we gonna see? Do you have a name? Morelli, Mike. We recovered a picture of the family. Okay. Anything else? To be honest, I just got here, Phelps. Best you talk to Lynch, he's the expert. Doesn't make any sense. Why aren't they scattered around like the rest of the debris? I think they've been moved. Ooh. I think someone moved them after the explosion and before the fire. Can you explain that, please? I'm almost positive the cause of death is asphyxiation due to gas inhalation. Look at the parts of their bodies that aren't scorched. The coloring around the fingertips is typical. They wouldn't have felt a thing. I think the fire damage is post-mortem. I think someone moved him into this room after the explosion. It still doesn't make any sense. Why would you run into a burning building? What are we doing? The prayer effect is from the fire. The muscles and tendons contract. Never the same, are they? You ever think about how many people have died in this world and how big heaven would have to be to accommodate them bigs? No, I have not. Show some respect. Okay. It's our boy. I think he watches the fires. I think the Sawyer fire went wrong. But what about the guy we have in jail, Phelps? We got the wrong guy. That doesn't explain why he ran into a burning building. What would make anyone do that? Guilt. For the fire? For his mistake. This guy wants to burn houses, not families. He expects the houses to be empty. He was trying to redeem himself. Probably thought they'd be happier together. You are one very disturbed individual, Phelps. I know you had it rough lately, but you should start to compartmentalize your thoughts. He could be right. Can you come up with an alternative explanation? I'm sure it's the same guy. Are you telling me that some son of a bitch murdered these people, the whole family, and arranged them here like Cupid dolls? Might fit, Cole, but I don't think we could ever prove it. There's very little evidence. Ugh. Evidence? <laughs> Albert, check out the hot water system. Make sure we're dealing with the same M.O. Sure, Phil. So I'll get back to you. Leave the rest to us, Cole. You better find out what's eating digs. Damn, he just like went nuts. Maybe he had a family burning a fire or something. Junk. I don't think there's anything for me to look at. So something finally got to you. You want my help, pretty boy? You got it. You keep riding me, and you won't be pretty much longer. We can get this guy, Herschel. You think you've seen everything, Phelps? I was with the 2nd Marines at Bella Wood. The things that went on in that farmhouse. My own guys, on fire, screaming for a way out. We are not gonna get this guy. There's gonna be no photos and no citations. We're gonna kill this miserable fuck. End of story. You get me? 
You remember the list from the travel agent? Sure. The Morellis were winners, too. Their name was on that list. Christ. We should take a look around, work the neighbors, see what they know. I'll go across the street. Okay, I'll try this side. I haven't done this for years. <laughs> hey, even addition, how you doing? Like right? I'm a detective. LAPD, can you tell me anything about the fire next door? Terrible luck. Imagine after having won that weekend away. What's your name, sir? Foreman. Dudley Foreman. <clears throat> I'm doing pretty good, thanks. Did you see or hear anything that might have... Look, we were asleep when we heard the explosion. Uh... You didn't have to interrupt me. You didn't like Morelli, did you? Some neighbors you get along with, some you don't. Guess they should have sold up. What do you mean? They're knocking down all these old houses and building a new subdivision for GIs. Morelli was being difficult. You said someone is knocking these houses down? Elysian Fields. You must know them. They're billboards. That Monroe character beaming down at you. We've had an offer for the house. Did the Morellis want to sell? I don't know. Gosh, this guy's so suspicious looking. He's got them shifty eyes. Whatever you thought of Morelli, his whole family is dead. They couldn't have all deserved that. I want you to help me here, Foreman. Morelli was pig-headed. He built the house himself. He didn't want to sell. Stubborn fool was ruining it for all of us. All right. You said the Morellis had won a weekend away. To Catalina Island? Yeah, that's right. First thing I thought after the explosion was, thank goodness they was away. But then I find out they were still in there. Who was running the competition? What? I don't know. Well, how would he know who was running the competition? Uh, but he does answer so quickly that it just seems like he's trying not to get in trouble. I need more, yeah. Mr. Foreman. Tell me what you know about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. I know nothing about it. I've never heard of them. He's probably telling the truth. <laughs> Mr. A man like you always loses battles with. Why is this guy talking to me? <laughs> I'll Show's beat you over. Up. Keep moving, all of you. <laughs> okay. That's the swine. Look at him. I want to beat this guy up. There we go. <laughs> I don't like that guy. Where's, uh,. What are you doing? Is he peeking in their windows? Wait, what's going on here? There's a white dot. Can I still talk to him? I guess I'll just look around. Oh, here's some stuff. Looks like the same model. And it was Varley. Again. The guy that we arrested. This is the flashpoint. Heater detonated with enough force to expose the foundations. Can I go down there? Just 
just jump in? He did that. <laughs> Can I go back inside? Ugh. I'm away. Okay, <laughs> it's a hammer. I'm gonna get electrocuted down here, I just know it. Okay, this is like Silent Hill. Flyers, yeah! Is that a baseball? Oh, it is a baseball. I doubt it. Uh, I don't know what to do. Do I go back to the travel agency? I already talked to this guy. Is there someone over there? I don't see a neighbor over here. Clear this area immediately. <laughs> well, there's no one here. Who else do I talk to? Another one of these. How did you get my number, Ira? At first, I didn't understand you. But now I do. I'd like you to come back to the clinic. I'm helping other people now, doctor. I think you are confused. You haven't been to the clinic for weeks. I'm not confused anymore, doctor. I'm helping people be together. This world is only temporary. Why don't you tell me where you are and I can come to you? I think the fires should end now. They have served their purpose. Oh, the fires are only beginning, Doctor. After the fires, everything will be beautiful and clean. Everything will be erased. The world will be fresh and new. I can see my purpose now, Doctor. And you helped me to find it. Just 
got jobs everywhere. Real happiness is when you marry a girl for love and you find out later. I haven't a clue what I'm supposed to do. Should I run over the neighbors? I can do that. <laughs> Let's get the car. Oh, maybe that guy saw something. Is this a neighbor? Got Gotta be something big, right? Is somebody gonna tell us what the hell's going on? talk to <laughs> I don't know what to do now is there someone over here what is my partner doing exactly what now well, from the neighbors call keep working I talk to the neighbors I'm just gonna go run some people over. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Can I run over the neighbor that I just spoke to? I don't think so. Sorry, my fault! <laughs> The lady's dead. <laughs> I know that face. The guy that busted all those Negro drug stations last week. I talked to the neighbor. All a man can do is put in a prayer for the dead. About all I've got to say. Talk to <sighs> this is obnoxious. Did it something bug the game? <gasps> My golden baby, come back here. catch up to it. <laughs> what about the people behind their house? Can I go over there? See my objectives? Here we go, case objectives. Interview the neighbor. I have interviewed the neighbor. It says neighbor, not neighbors. Which I have done. What more do they want me to do?
I wonder what restart does. Is it restart the case? The overall progression will be. Okay, yes. Let's just start this over. <laughs> I don't think I can skip anything. <sighs> Let's try this again. House fire. Bad one. At least four Vicks. Get out there and find out what you can. The address is 650 North Hobart. The thing was, he was a really nice guy. I felt lousy collaring him. <clears throat> I want to take him You know what I Alright, hopefully this time we don't get stuck. Out of the car! Police! You sure you're a cop? Yeah. You guys better see this. I hope you have strong stomachs. Do you have a name? Morelli, Mike. We recovered a picture of the family. Okay. Anything else? Be honest, I just got here, Phelps. Best you talk to Lynch. He's the expert. Doesn't make any sense. Why aren't they scattered around like the rest of the debris? I think they've been moved. Ooh. I think someone moved them after the explosion and before the fire. Can you explain that, please? I'm almost positive the cause of death is asphyxiation due to gas inhalation. Look at the parts of their bodies that aren't scorched. The coloring around the fingertips is typical. They wouldn't have felt it, then. 
I think the fire damage is post mortem. I think someone moved him into this room after the explosion. It still doesn't make any sense. Why would you run into a burning building? What are we doing? Prayer effect is from the fire. The muscles and tendons contract. You ever think about how many people have died in this world? And how big heaven would have to be to accommodate them bigs? No, I have not. Show some respect. Find anything interesting? It's our boy. I think he watches the fires. I think the Sawyer fire went wrong. But what about the guy we have in jail, Phelps? We got the wrong guy. That doesn't explain why he ran into a burning building. What would make anyone do that? Guilt. For the fires? for his mistake. This guy wants to burn houses, not families. He expects the houses to be empty. He's trying to redeem himself. He probably thought they'd be happier together. You are one very disturbed individual, Phelps. I know you had it rough lately, but you should start to compartmentalize your thoughts. He could be right. And you come up with an alternative explanation? I'm sure it's the same guy. Are you telling me that some son of a bitch murdered these people, the whole family, and arranged them here like Cupid dolls? Might fit, Cole, but I don't think we could ever prove it. There's very little evidence. Evidence! <laughs> Albert, check out the hot water system. Make sure we're dealing with the same M.O. Sure, Phelps. I'll get back to you. Leave the rest to us, Cole. We're going to find out what's eating the pig. So something finally got to you. You want my help, pretty boy? You got it. You keep riding me, and you won't be pretty much longer. <clears throat> we can get this guy, Herschel. You think you've seen everything, Phelps? I was with the 2nd Marines at Bella Wood. The things that went on in that farmhouse. My own guys, on fire, screaming for a way out. You're not gonna get this guy. There's gonna be no photos and no citations. We're gonna kill this miserable fuck. End the story. You get this? He just wants to commit moida. You remember the list from the travel agent? Sure. The Morellis were winners too. Their name was on that list. Christ. We should take a look around, work the neighbors, see what they know. I'll go across the street. Okay, I'll try this side. I haven't done this for years. How bad is it? It's kind of strange to be smoking a cigarette right outside of a burnt down, burnt down house. Eh, whatever. Looks like the same model. All right. Now let's talk to this guy again and see what happens. Something had to have screwed up because you he's the only like guy I can talk to. Done. LAPD, can you tell me anything about the fire next door? Terrible luck. Imagine after having won that weekend away. What's your name, sir? Foreman. Dudley Foreman. Did you see or hear anything that might have... Look. We were asleep when we heard the explosion. You didn't like Morelli, did you? Some neighbors you get along with, some you don't. Guess they should have sold up. What do you mean? They're knocking down all these old houses and building a new subdivision for GIs. Morelli was being difficult. You said someone is knocking these houses down? Elysian Fields. You must know them. They're billboards. That Monroe character beaming down at you? We've had an offer for the house. Did the Morellis want to sell? I don't know. Whatever you thought of Morelli, his whole family is dead. They couldn't have all deserved that. I want you to help me here, Foreman. Morelli was pig-headed. He built the house himself. He didn't want to sell. Stubborn fool was ruining it for all of us. 
You said the Morellis had won a weekend away. To Catalina Island? Yeah, that's right. First thing I thought after the explosion was, thank goodness they was away. But then I find out they were still in there. Who was running the competition? What? I don't know. You didn't enter yourself? I'd already agreed to sell. The competition was an incentive for those who were still thinking about it. All a man can do is put in a prayer for the mm -hmm. dead. About all I've got to say about it. All right, well. I guess I'm just missing something. Neighbors, Cole. Keep working them. Okay. There's no other neighbors. They ain't. Okay. I have no idea what it wants me to do. Flashpoint. The heater detonated with enough force to expose the foundations. Let's see if I can look it up because I'm, I'm obviously missing something. Okay, it says they're supposed to be... A paper crane, like in the intro. Somewhere. Is this it? I swear, this town is going straight down. No, those are cigarettes. But Whoever he was, he was wearing boondockers. I would know that imprint anywhere. I guess that's why you said boondunkers they ain't. Alright, there should be a crane somewhere. Is 
This guy that I'm looking at doesn't tell me where it is. It just says to unfold it. Picking up a cigarette butt was something we had to do. I don't see a crane anywhere. Hey, I don't have all day. I guess we can question him about the boots now. Did you see anyone hanging around the Morelli's home prior to the explosion? Nope. Can't say as I was looking out, though. You sure, Mr. Foreman? There are signs of someone hanging around over there by the fence. Hey, now that you come to think of it, there was a guy. Kind of tall. Skinny, though. Anything else? Orange lumber jacket, beat up hat, and no hair. I thought he was the pest exterminator guy who was working around here the last few days. But that guy had hair. Thanks for your time, Mr. Foreman. Sure. Hey, if you're interested, I have one of those competition flyers in the kitchen. I could get it for you if you like. That would be great. Oh. Any luck, Cole? A couple of things. What did you pick up? Hold a piece of paper. Looks complicated. Japanese call it origami. Can I take a look? Sure. Paper crane. There's a legend about them. You fold 1,000 of these and you get a wish. Hey, don't break it. I'm not. I'm unfolding it. It looks like a waybill or a flyer. For what? For Elysian Fields developments. Oh, I see you already have one. When did the flyer arrive in your mailbox? They've been arriving for weeks. This one was in the mailbox when I got home from work yesterday afternoon. All right, use the telephone. I swear, this town is going straight to hell. <laughs> How bad is it? Come on, you can tell me. I need an address for a property developer. Elysian Fields Developments. One moment, detective. The address is 748 North Oxford Avenue, Wilshire. Anything else? Messages, please. You have a message. Contact Captain McKelty immediately. Thanks. Can you put me through, operator? Of course. Here you are. Commander? Elise on the Morelli farm. We're about to go and visit Elysian Fields Developments. You're about to do what? Leland Monroe? He's a personal friend of the mayor and the chief. Are you out of your mind? I'm warning you, Phelps. Commander, we have a line of inquiry. You have something, you bring it to me. You're hanging by a thread, Phelps. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Good. Have a report on my desk today. Three blocks walking to a bar. Kelty has warned us off over a legion. Makes sense. It's a dead end. We should check out Rancho Escondido. 
you know the place. Sure, corner of Fountain and Wilton. Let's go. All right. I wonder what happens if we do go to Elysium Fields. car before the light turns green. Nope. LAPD, police emergency. Do this. <laughs> I just did. I was lucky. Hello. Oh. <laughs> I took that cart a long way. Gosh darn it all! Where'd you learn to draw? religion in the end of a nightstick than in a hundred cathedrals. I'm not gonna tell you again, sir. Don't tell me when and how I can come and go on my own property. It is not This is safe, America, dickhead. Sir. Now step back or I'll lock you up for Smart a break. son of a bitch. <gasps> come on, then. I'm gonna stop spitting a GI. We're gonna have to pacify these poor sacks. I got you. Good thing you showed up when you did, detectives. Those folks were baying for blood. Okay, then. Let's see if there's anything left to take a look at. Why are we here? I have no idea what we're doing here. Why are all these homes burnt down? Well, I see nothing. Is that normal in a fire? You'd expect some shrinkage in the heat, but it looks like the cement barely adhered to the brick. 
Doesn't appear to be any wall ties either. This thing looks like it was built on the cheap. Whoa. If we're paying a visit to Alicia and ruining my career, let's bite the bullet and get on with it. Oh, okay. So we are gonna go. I think I've driven one of these. Uh, I guess I have. Detectives Phelps and Biggs, LAPD, to see Leland Monroe. Do you have an appointment? With a police lady. We don't need an appointment. Can I tell him what it's about? It's an official investigation. There are two police officers here to see Mr. Monroe. Send them through. And that's our cue. Thanks, ma'am. I help you, gentlemen? I would like to speak to Mr. Monroe. I'm afraid it's impossible. Mr. Monroe's schedule is booked weeks in advance. Cut to the chase, sister. Is he in? I'm not at liberty to reveal that officer. So he hired you for your intelligence? I find that offensive. You have every right to. This is getting us nowhere, miss. Casino. Would you like us to return with a warrant? That won't be necessary, gentlemen. Come into my office. And this place is super nice. You like a cigar? Drink, boy. Sure, I'll have a scotch. Biggs! Investigating a series of domestic fires, Mr. Monroe. Terrible boy. How can I help? Elysian Fields and Suburban Redevelopment Fund flyers keep turning up in the vicinity of the fires. They're turning up all over town, boys. 
Can you imagine the current demand for housing? So that's your explanation, Mr. Monroe? Coincidence? Explanation? Why, what's to explain? I advertise on radio and billboards for buyers, and I advertise for sellers using Waybill. We found a family burnt out in their home. Another house burned to the ground. Another Elysian Fields flyer. Our information is that they didn't want to sell. Are you saying that's something to do with me? Is that your point? Oh, it is. Every time we find a family barbecue, we find one of your flyers. Is that good advertising? What do you know about a competition for families to win free vacations to Catalina Island? My company runs many promotions. I'm, I'm not familiar with that one. Level with me, Mr. Monroe. You know all about the vacation offers. You can believe whatever you like, son. You're missing the vital ingredient called proof. <laughs> Your face is all over the flyers, Mr. Monroe. You know about the prizes, and you're aware that they get given to holdouts. My face is the brand. It's on all our advertising. Did you know that the mayor and the chief of police are part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Do you want to accuse them of murder as well? Yes. Make offers to buy houses in areas where fires have been recorded. <laughs> Are you suggesting that I'm burning people out of their homes so that I can sell them new ones? What happens to your plans if a family like the Morellis refuses to sell? We work around them. Business finds a way. That's the American way. Hmm. This guy's crazy. Come on, Mr. Monroe. You expect me to believe that you would build a new development with one of those old piles smack bang in the center of it? Progress is an inexorable process, detective. Those who choose to stand in defiance are usually confined to the waste basket of history. To answer your question, yes, we would build around them if we had to. Most people see sense. <laughs> What's Elysian Fields' involvement in Rancho Escondido? One of our latest housing developments. It was due to open on the weekend, or was, before the unfortunate conflagration. It met with building code regulation? Absolutely. Only the best for our returning heroes. Um, that brick we pulled out proves otherwise. You're lying. There's something out of kilter about that development. Son, I've had enough of you and your fidgety friend. There's no way in hell you can prove that my materials were inferior. I'm no expert, but I think we'll find that the bricks being used on those houses are undersized and the mortar is faulty. And there's no wall ties connecting the masonry to the frame. Every building is built to a budget, boys. Those buildings were inspected and fully insured by California Fire and Light. Investment of that magnitude demands it. Do you think the Fed vouch for the buildings without examining them? The arsonists, do you have any suspects? We aren't at liberty to say. I didn't think so. The contractors I use for Wayville. Suppose there could be any of them. I have a list of their names, if it would be of any help. That would be very helpful, Mr. Monroe. Glad to hear it. I'm always happy to help the LAPD. My secretary will provide you with that list. Did you know that I'm on the board of the police pension fund? <laughs> 
Glad to be of help, officers. What's the story? Any of these names ring a bell? Herbert Chapman is on this list. Find the phone. We need to know where we're at with Chapman. Boss is a fine man. I'm trying to imagine you with a personality. Is there a phone in here? What's in here? I didn't come to California to be a secretary. Wow. Why am I able to come in here? Did you read about the woman who stabbed her husband and then pushed him in front of the car? Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, Detective? Can you check whether we are still holding a Herbert Chapman? Let me find out for you. He was released this morning, Detective. Damn. I'm sorry, Detective. Not your fault. Can you give me a last known address and put out an APB on the guy? I'll get back to you, Detective. APB will go out over KGPL shortly. Thank you. I love the chase till the minute I win it. A beautiful face delivers love for me in it. Give me your heart, and baby, I'll bill it. Cause I always kill the things I love. Some Buy me a drink, Cole. No! Not even for old time's sake? Not even for that. You're not gonna ask me why I'm here? I wouldn't give you the pleasure. Get around her. She's in fine voice this evening. I wonder how the commander would feel Save about... the threats for someone who cares about the boy. You're breaking my heart, Cole. You know how I feel about you. Stay away from Elysian Fields. I should have known that you were playing Aaron Boy. You and your doofus partner. You have been warned. Thanks for your cooperation, officer. I love you. Stay away. You have no idea the type of people that are involved in that company. I have a pretty good idea, Roy. The same kind of people that sent you here. Your investigation is finished. Homicide will be taking over from here. I've heard we've had a spate of grass fires in the hills that you and that hunchback might be able to handle. Thanks for the drink, Cole. You get the message about Monroe? Yeah. Earl delivered it. You? Kelty. He started making noises about my pension. Sorry about that, Earl. I didn't need to drag him into this. Save it, Phelps. Monroe's an ass -way. And so was Earl. And so was McKelty when it's all said and done. KGPL calling car 11K, 11K. 11K, go ahead. 11K, the last known address of suspect Herbert Chapman is 650 North Kingsley Drive in Wilshire. Roger that, KGPL. 11K en route. Let's go pick him up. All right. You fought at Sugarloaf, didn't you? I did. But I don't like to talk about it. You come across a guy called Jack Kelso out that way? You know Jack Kelso? He's an insurance investigator over California Fire and Life. Our paths cross. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> Jack spoken to you about his experiences. Whoa! What are you doing? <laughs> Jack keeps stung just like you. I know what it feels like to get back from conflict. You gotta respect it. No! Thanks for the tip. Sorry! My partner isn't the greatest driver in the world. This 
a power game, Phelps? <laughs> power game? What is this guy doing? <laughs> Look at all these purple cars. I wouldn't feel safe in a tank when you drive it. Do they all see the same thing? Just the different voice actors? I think we're on fire. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Look at him go. Uh. Hey, there's such a thing as soap, you know. You don't own the sidewalk. <laughs> yes, I do. We're looking for Herbert Chapman. I'm looking for him, too. I need him to move his car so I can mow the lawn. He's definitely not here. I've been banging on his door off and on for a couple of hours. Yeah, he's out somewhere. Is there some kind of problem? Let's take a look at the car. It's a hearse. Let's see what he's hauling around. Motive, opportunity, and hard evidence. We should revise the APB. He's clearly armed. Why don't we keep the bullets? Definitely gives him opportunity. Hold it, cool. There he is. It's Chapman. He's coming out of the laundromat. Shit. He's seen us. Cops. Again. Son of a bitch. He must have caught the trolley. We gotta move fast, Cole. I'll call this in. Get some cars dispatched. Car 11K calling KGPL. 11K requesting assistance in pursuit of suspect aboard the 1110 University streetcar currently heading east on Melrose Avenue. Advise all units. Suspect is in control of car and driving dangerously. Roger, 11K. All units, officers need assistance on Melrose Avenue. The suspect aboard the 1110 University streetcar headed eastbound. Approach with caution. Suspect is in control of the streetcar and driving dangerously. Units to handle code 3 identified. Stay on his 
those asshole. Don't lose them. It's kind of hard to lose them. You're not going very fast. <laughs> I wish I could do that. See if he can damage one of the wheels. Might act like a brake and slow the thing down. No! You gotta get me closer! Trying. Hold him tight, Cole. As soon as he ditches it. End of the line, you little prick. Come on, Cole. Looks like we have our man, Cole. Well done. I'm not so sure. Chapman seemed to have his own agenda. There seems to be more to this than a personal vendetta. What are you talking about? The fires benefit a lesion in some way. I see Chapman and Monroe working together. You have a point. The evidence is good for Chapman. Hard to be worrying about his side of the story when he's blasting away with that big 45. Nice work, gentlemen. Put yourself at considerable risk stopping that trolley and probably saved a lot of lives. Anyone else but you, Phelps, and you'd be up for a bravery award. We've had our eyes on that slippery son of a bitch Chapman for as long as I can remember. Couldn't be happier than to wipe him off the scoreboard. I hope this puts to bed that crazy stuff you had going about Leland Monroe. What were you thinking, Phelps? You'll be calling Richard Nixon a crook next. <laughs> A letter from Lou. His insurance policy named me beneficiary. California fire and life. You worked for a lesion? The roof that he was working on collapsed. It's a very generous settlement. Elsa, I'd like you to do something for me. I think there's something dirty about Elysian Fields. What has that got to do with Lou? I want you to reject this settlement. I want you to go and see an investigator. Jack Kelso, and ask him to make some inquiries about Lou's case. Isn't this police work? Do you want to find out what happened to Lou? Why would he help Miss Kelso? Jack won't be able to help himself if he smells a rat. He's a friend of yours? He hates my guts. Elsa, you could take this money and let them get away with it, or we could get Jack's help and do something about it. Why not be honest with this man, Cole? He deserves your honesty if you want his help. Believe me, Elsa, I'd like to level with him. I really would, but it's too late. Years too late. Ooh. Found all the clues and all the questions. by pretty quickly. Mr. Kelso? That's what the sign on the door says, miss. There's no need to come into the office, Ms. Lichtman. If you accept the settlement, all you need to do is sign here. I don't accept the what settlement. What do you mean you don't accept? I think you're pushing your luck, lady. This seems to be a ridiculously generous settlement. A $200 policy with a $20,000 payout? You should... I don't want the money. What do you mean you don't want the money? I want you to investigate this case. I 
feel my friend may have been the victim of foul play. Okay, let me get the case file. Yes, we're playing as Kelso now. There's got to be more in these files. Yes, that's it. <laughs> There's something else in that report. I know it. Okay. I don't know what he wants me to look at. I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Sounds like your friend took a hell of a fall. I'm sorry for your loss. Let's see, well, I'm the employee of Elysian Fields Development. Uh, Louis, Louis Jan Butchwalter was killed when the roof of the property on which he was working collapsed. On Tuesday, 28th January at approximately 8.30 in the morning, 
Mr. Butch Walter was ascending the roof structure of a property at the Normandy Avenue development when a fault in the ridge beam caused it to sag. Witnesses report that Mr. Butch Walter, Walter slipped and attempted to right himself by holding onto a ceiling rafter, but the rafter broke. Mr. Butch Walter fell approximately 23 feet to the ground. His feet, uh, his falling weight caused several ceiling joints to snap, and these fell inward along with part of a prefabricated roof truss. An autopsy later revealed that Mr. Butch Walter's cranium was shattered, probably when he struck his head on one of the roof beams. He sustained significant internal injuries as a result of the falling timber, and died of internal hemorrhage approximately 10 minutes after the initial roof collapse. Independent testing of the ridge beam and roof truss has determined the faults in the timber were undetectable prior to installation. Witnesses report that Mr. Butchwalter was following all safety procedures. It is the opinion of this investigator that the death of Lou Louis Jan Butchwalter constitutes a genuine and unavoidable industrial accident, and no fault can be ascribed to Elysian Field Developments. The insurance benefits associated with this policy should be paid in full to the designated beneficiaries. Do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions? Of course not. What basis do you have for your claim of foul play? Lou Buckwalter was a craftsman. I don't believe he would have made a roof that would collapse. She's doing the shifty eyes. You want me to reopen this case based on your woman's intuition? That isn't going to happen. Take the money. I've already told you I do not want the money. There's something wrong in that house. You and Buck Walter weren't married? No. Then how did you become his beneficiary? We were... Family friends. She's still doing the shift, yes. You expect me to reopen this case because you come in here walking that walk? Well, I'm not buying it. I think you should tell me what the hell is going on. You really want to know? Yes. We were interned together on Ellis Island. Resident alien Germans whose parents had been killed by Nazis. You see the irony in that, Mr. Kelso. We spent four years there. So the roof collapsed. Accidents happened. What exactly are you trying to achieve here, Miss Lichtman? Exactly what I said. I want that building thoroughly investigated. I'm intrigued, Miss Lichtman. I really am. But you're going to have to give me something if you want me to get involved in this. There is a conspiracy surrounding Elysian Fields and the new houses they are building. I believe your insurance company is involved. That's pretty heady stuff, Miss Lichtman. Flimsy, but heady. I've told you what I know, Mr. Kelso. What are you going to do about it? All right, Miss Lichtman. One final question. Yes. What's your address? Is that the usual? Is there anything usual about this case, Ms. Lichtman? The address is on the letter, Mr. Kelso. The address? Not the phone number. Mr. Benson would like to see you in his office, Jack, upstairs. Come on, we'll walk you up. Okay, I guess we're playing as uh, this guy.
Can I change his suit? No. <laughs> Someone ought to take him home. He's loaded. I would assume it's this big office here. Yes. Mr. Benson? You wanted to see me? Ah, yes, Jack. I'm just trying out a new putter. I noticed Elsa Lickman in the lobby. It's the weirdest thing, Mr. Benson. Call me Curtis, Jack. This is California. Like I said, Curtis, this is a very strange case. How so, Jack? That lady, Elsa Lickman, is refusing a 20 grand payout. Elsa Lickman is hardly a lady, Jack. She's a jazz musician. Plays at the Blue Room in Hollywood. She has a fine pair of lungs, now that I think She's of the it. beneficiary of this guy, Lou Buckwalter. He was killed in an industrial accident working for Elysian Fields Developments. You know Elysian? I'm familiar with Leland Monroe. We move in similar circles. Well, Miss Lichtman is making some pretty serious accusations. She says the case stinks and that she's a very happened. highly strung girl, Jack. Strung out might be a better way to put it. It's a pretty generous payment, Curtis. I think I should look into it. Is there anything wrong with the paperwork, Kelso? No, there isn't, Mr. Benson. I didn't think so. Pay the case out and get her off our backs. I can't make her take the money, Deal sir. with it, Jack. Do your fucking job. Do I have to do everything? No, sir, you don't. Fine, Jack. Fine. You know I have the greatest confidence in you. Thanks, Mr. Benson. A dick wad. Keep talking. Someday you'll say Your something. Time, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, kid. All right, time for Kelso to be a shitty driver. Is this his car? It's a new car. What? Is he talking to himself? Poor slob. Poor slob. <laughs> Hold your car. That's not how my pop taught me to mix it. Someone is cutting corners. Bulldozing and starting again. City of Los Angeles pursuant to section 
191 part 1 subsection A of the California Building Code hereby orders that any building work at the Normandy Avenue subdivision associated with the incident of 1-28-1947 be immediately demolished and all building material removed from the site. Leland Monroe, the man with the grin. Looks like he doesn't like to be disappointed. Delays will not be tolerated. just can't be walking around down here. I'm Jack Kelso, from California Fire and Life. I don't care if you're from the Vatican. Buzz off. I'm investigating the accidental death of a Lou Buckwalter, and- You deaf? Do I have to beat on you? Looks like you do. Oh, okay. I came to see the house where Lou Buckwalter died. You were just about to offer to show me the way. It's out the gate and three houses down on the left. Don't know what you're looking for, smart guy. There's nothing there. Then I'll poke around in the rubble. Fine. As long as you're out of my sight. Is this how men, like, acted back in the day? If they didn't like somebody, it's just like, let's, let's do this. Aggressive. The place falls down and then they bulldoze it. What gives here? I could afford that. He wishes he could afford what? Who are you? Yeah, I'm the guess. Hiding from the wife. He wants a five star goddamn wedding. What the hell? Let's try to piece this together. Mister, That's not a man right. like you always loses a battle of wits because you're unarmed. What the hell? Keystone Films? Who gets their lumber from a film studio? Driver.
Okay. What just happened? Escape from the loony bin. <laughs> Maybe. Jack Kelso, California Fire and Life Investigator. I need an address on the Keystone Film Company. The address is six five eight North Wilton Place. Is there anything else? No, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Clear it. Just kill everybody. Out of my way. <laughs> I work for California Fire and Life. I'm looking into an industrial accident. Here? No, not here. The housing development over on Normandy Avenue. So? I found some lumber over there had the Keystone name printed on it. We've been closed since 41. Never quite made the transition to talkies. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund are pulling the place down. Know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Nix. Mind if I take a look around? I'm kind of hungry. If someone was to leave a couple of bucks here, I might wander down the street and get a cup of coffee. Is there a key to the gate? No. The only guys who go in or out are some delivery guys from Elysian Fields. They're working on a housing development over at Wilton and Santa Monica. You'll have to hop it. Well, that was easy. See what the rich and powerful have to say for themselves. The wheel should be nearby. I'm going to 
officers. So we are fooling. We are here for the man. All cabin out of there. We're still in the mess now. All mad dogs in the view out there. Is that me, Mark? I'm an actor. Thing is, I kill him. Here we are. I kill him. We're from out. Is it? Still looking at some of his resident shop. Lexington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds by the back door. You can't have it both ways, Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean uh, our pockets, Leland. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. So, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise three billion dollars. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen... Oh, there we go. I, I didn't know I was supposed to do that. <laughs> In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen joined forces to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GI. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. He's our latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire and Life. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor. District Attorney Don Sandler and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be in such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the thespian fraternity. I find that those of artistic temperament are often of a fragile mental disposition. It's a short step from miscreant to recidivism, Doctor. Very true. But I think we could all agree that the City of Angels does rather well basking in the reflection of the motion picture industry. Here, here, and it's something that every sucker getting off a train at Union Station wants a part of. Gentlemen, we're here to sell the American dream, and Hollywood is our greatest advertiser. So, how is your new development selling, Leland? I cannot throw them up fast enough, Ray. And that's part of the problem, Leland. Washington is receiving steady complaints. There's a clamor for public housing. God damn it, Ray. Public housing is tantamount to communism. Now, that's why we fought this goddamn war. I'm telling you, it's reds by the back door. You can't have it both ways, Leland. The new freeways are being built to service all your developments out in the boondocks. They're all being built with government money. The GI Bill is government money. There's a difference. What difference? The GI money ends up in my pocket. I hope you mean uh, our pockets, Leland. We're all investors. Of course, Curtis. So, when will the freeway bond be passed on? It still has to be ratified. It takes a long time to raise three billion dollars. I need to find a game well or a telephone. In a great day for the future of Los Angeles, civic leaders and businessmen joined forces really to launch the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. The Suburban Redevelopment Fund pledges to speed up housing development for returning GI. I think there's a newspaper over here, but I'm not 100% sure. Gentlemen, this is Dr. Harlan Fontaine. No, I don't think so. He's our latest investor in the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. Doctor, this is Curtis Benson. He's vice president of the California Fire and Life. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. Ray Gordon, editor of the Times. Doctor, District Attorney Don Sandler, and Police Chief Warren. Gentlemen, I am delighted to be in such exalted company. You're making quite a name for yourself, Doctor, amongst the SBM fraternity. I find that those of autistic temperament are often a I suppose it's all in the system, boy. Operator, think you could put me through to police dispatch? Thanks. Putting you through now. This is Jack Kelso, investigator for California Fire and Life. Can you put me through to Curtis Benson, please? Just a moment, please, Mr. Kelso. Jack, how can I help? 
Do you know anything about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund, Mr. Benson? I've heard of them, Jack. Building new homes for GIs. With green lumber that was used on movie sets. Jack, are you working the Buck Walter case? Mr. Benson, are you part of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund? Jack, I want you to listen very clearly. Call Miss Lickman. Call her as soon as you hang up. Arrange to see her tonight and get her to agree to the settlement. Do it tonight. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. End of story, Jack. I don't want to hear another word about Elsa Lickman or Luke Buckwalter. Can you put me through to Michigan 221? Putting the call through. Hello? Ms. Lichtman, it's Jack Kelso. Yes, Mr. Kelso. I've been looking into your case. Yes, and what have you found? It doesn't look good. I need to see you. Meet me at the Blue Room. I work there tonight. I take a break around 9. I'll be waiting at the stage door. You can talk then. Auf Wiedersehen, Mr. Kelso. Thanks, ma'am. What were you doing with him? I was doing what you asked. I didn't ask you to meet him in an alleyway. Why do you snarl at me? Your friend came to ask me to accept the insurance. He's plan. not my friend, Elsa. I think he's a brave man. And you have placed him in great danger. You've involved him in something, and he has no idea of the risks. Can you live with that, Cole? Elsa, I need his help. He hates my guts. Forget the past, Cole. He deserves a chance to say no. If he helps you, let it be on his terms. I'll go see him in the morning. You want a tip? Refill my coffee fast. Can I go inside or go not? Where do I go now? <laughs> I can go back. I must have missed something. Let's look. You only knew what was oh. happening. <laughs> <laughs> Sandwich that guy. Out of my way! No! <laughs> Damn it! 
got time for this. Park in the middle of the street. I don't think there's anything in here. I got myself stuck. Oh, there we go. <laughs> One way to keep your costs down. Too bad it won't support a roof. So this is where their lumber comes from? that was gonna happen. Let's take this fancy pin. Must be everything else. Oh man, you know what I've been craving? I'm craving pre birds burritos.
little free birds. Heads up. You nearly knocked it down. <laughs> the tree knocked it off. That's actually what time it is right now. Nice wiring job, fellas. <laughs> Keep them in the dark. You lose something, Mac? I thought these private eye types were all wise guys with smart mouths. Looks like the snappy repartee has all dried up. Get on with it. What's your hurry, Mac? You got some place to go? You ever do the cat and mouse routine without a gun in your hand? Now that's more like it. Let's put a few caps in that. All right. I was pushing Q. You're a worn tough guy. You should learn to take a hint. Get him downstairs and into the trunk. Sure, he turned up all right. He's wishing he didn't. He's in the trunk. He's going nowhere. The boys introduce themselves. <laughs> what do you want done with him, Mr. Monroe? Yeah, I know a good place. We'll pick up a shovel and a pick on the way. It's up in the hills behind Griffith Park. We'll deal with that German bitch next.
Should I try and get in this vehicle? What the hell? Sorry, pal. Desperate times. <laughs> I guess I don't really have to worry. Oh, there they are. Shots, but they're nowhere near me. <laughs> they all got out of the car. Where are they? Is that the last of them? <laughs> Must be his. not use that nasty water. <laughs> so you're still carrying that Army 45, Cole? thousand dollars in injuries. Not bad. Satchel charges on the cave entrance from above. Covering fire on weapons team. Look for snipers in the trees. You know the drill. No risks, no heroes, no prisoners. You want some roast on this one, Sarge? No, you guys have done enough. Head back to Webs. We are going to blow every cave we come across. Close them down and move on, people. Damn. I was hoping to get me a samurai sword. Skipper says that Phelps has fallen behind again. He's got his fire team's checking every cave. He's lost another flamethrower. He wants you to get over there and hurry them along. <laughs> Weapons compass. Sir. Sir. We have a major cave complex in front of us, Hogaboom. I want flamethrowers and BAR teams to clean it out. Begging your pardon, sir. But if it's a big complex, why don't we bring the Shermans in? They could pour it in there. We can't wait for tanks to be brought up. I'm already behind. Then blow the cave. No skin off our nose. Bury them We in are there. going in there and clearing them out. We are doing it by the numbers, Sergeant. Get your team in place. We're moving out. Mount up! First fire team and flamethrowers, head in!
Where's he going? Where's who going? The big cowboy. He's going in. Who gave that order? You did. How long have you been sitting there? Not long, Mr. Kelso. You look lovely, Princess. You haven't exactly caught me at my best. It's okay, Miss Lichtman. I'm a big boy. I know how to take my licks. Please, call me Elsa. Okay, Elsa. What can I do for you? I'd like to explain because I... I can join the dots, Elsa. Cole needs your help, Jack. The police department have frozen him out. Look, you're obviously a brave lady, but you can't fight all Cole's battles for him. I just wanted to apologize for... You don't have to apologize. You were right about Elysian Fields. Tell me something. What was Lou Buckwalter's regular job? He was a carpenter. He built sets for RKO, Warner Brothers. Set carpenter? Perfect. If you don't mind, Elsa, I'd like to get a little rest now. I've got a lot more dots to join, and it's making my head hurt. That's perfectly understandable, Mr. Jack. I hope we can meet again under less dramatic circumstances. So too, Princess. I'd like that. You Kelso? Who's asking? Peterson, assistant DA. You're in the wrong building, Peterson. This is a hospital. <laughs> a wise guy. Let me tell you a story, Kelso. Can I get the abridged version? My head hurts. You're a funny guy, Jack. What do you want, Peterson? A colorful character mentioned your name. He said that you might know something about... There's a problem with colorful characters, Peterson. First they send you over a drink, then they buy you dinner, then you get a phone call in the middle of the night for a favor. Try rubbing shoulders with some solid citizens. They're the ones you're supposed to protect. You finished, Kelso? For the moment. I'm gonna run for DA, Kelso. The current administration stinks. And you want me to help? I'm looking for a DA's investigator. You get a gun and a badge and $120 a month. I get 150 a month now. I'm going after the vice squad, Kelso. It's going to get me elected. I've got something better. How about Leland Monroe? The property developer? Do you think I fell down the stairs? So many cutscenes. Oh, are we? Well, we're not better. <laughs> I guess we're still okay. What do I do? All right. I guess that's where I'm going. For some reason. Thanks for the patch up, Princess. You might be the only R and R I get for some time. Does he refer to every woman as princess? I'm offended. Men shouldn't be calling us that. I hate it when someone calls me princess. I'm not royalty. The only reason some people get lost in thought is because it's unfamiliar territory. Okay. What does he tell people? He's not 
a police officer. Gotta borrow this. Sorry. Don't pay the city all these goddamn taxes, and you need to take my car. I gotta borrow this. Hold E to skip to my destination? Hell no. I'm a maniac, maniac. That's unfortunate. That's not unfortunate. Slipping, Jack. <laughs> Remember me? Jack. It's good to see you. You've caught me at a slightly inopportune moment. Can we do this some other time? Back off, Curtis. Move away from the door. Jack, there's no call for that. You're smooth, Curtis. I'll give you that. You try to get me killed and you still manage to be polite about it. Jack, how could you accuse me of having anything to do with that? I want to know all about you and Monroe, Curtis. You give it up or I beat it out of you. Get the fuck out of here, Jack. You're fired. Who do you think you are? Get out of town now while you still have the chance. You have no idea what kind of forces you're dealing with here. I guess we've exhausted the passive options. <clears throat> Sit tight, Curtis. I'm taking a look around. Oh, good, he has shorts on under there. <laughs> Circumstantial. Irrelevant. What exactly do you expect to find, Jack? I'm taking it. To get all of the stockholders, I need to follow the paper trail. Jack, you've made a terrible mistake. Get out while you can.
What exactly do you expect to find, Jack? I knew you were in bed with a lesion, Curtis. Now I know why. the front door. Jack, you've made a terrible mistake. Get out while you can. I think that's all I can do. Oh, there's doors here. Whoa, hello. How old are you, princess? Sixteen, mister. How old are you really? Nearly thirteen. Oh. You take love where you can find it as you get older. Love? That has nothing to do with love, Curtis. Some might find your romantic notions endearing, Jack. I find them very tiring. You're finished, Curtis. That remains to be seen, Jack. I haven't told you about my new job, Curtis. DA's investigator. Who do you think the DA reports to, Jack? Get dressed, you're getting out of here. He's not so bad. He just lays on top of me and grunts for a few minutes. <laughs> He's kind. And he buys me nice things. Get dressed, you're leaving. She will only come back. I think I've seen everything. I want answers, Curtis. So pay attention. Please, Jack. I'm not a violent man. I don't get it, Curtis. You're vice president of the company. Why take the risk? It's a simple business transaction, dear boy. What is it with you people? How can you live any better? You already have houses, cars, yachts. Greed and avarice are very powerful forces for change, Jack. Combine that with the city's desire for progress, and it's a very heady cocktail. You need to be a very special man to be able to resist that. Tell me about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. You're talking about the future of Los Angeles. You cannot interfere with these plans. Information, Curtis. Business people who have joined forces to meet the demand for new homes. Uh... <laughs> You're lying, Curtis. They're going to burn those movie sets they call houses, and you're carrying the insurance on them. And how do you prove that, Jack? Rancho Escondido burnt to the ground. California Fire and Life is carrying the paper. Jack, the best result you could get from insurance would be replacement cost. The stakes are much, much higher. 
Why the big payoff in the Buckwalter case? It was bound to bring it to attention. Who could have predicted this particular confluence of events? Elsa Lichtman as the beneficiary who spurns the cash. The brilliant but flawed detective becoming her lover. And you, Jack, taking their bait. You buy green lumber and use it to build houses. How do you expect it to end? Mr. Monroe has a fine reputation for building houses. What would I know about his choice of building materials? Ugh, this guy's sleazy. Sleazy Martinez. Give me what I need or I'll beat it out of you. <laughs> it's all there in the case file. If you know what to look for. Very neat, Curtis. Maybe I can't work it out, but Phelps can. He may be many things, but he is one of the best detectives the LAPD has ever had. Your card is marked, Jack. You'll have an unfortunate accident if you don't leave town. Your California isn't the same as mine, Mr. Benson. Not at all. Okay. Now what? Okay. Here we go. Ooh. Is this the car we came in on? Oh. I don't think so. I don't know. I guess not. It's new. Perhaps. <laughs> she went flying. <laughs> People go flying. <laughs> they become astronauts. the sauce? What does that mean? <laughs> no time to explain. Hey, be careful with the copper. I'm not a copper, but alright. <laughs> I didn't even see that guy. <laughs> drivers. I didn't mean for that to happen. I did. Going up to my office party. Got to check over some files. Where's Take my... the elevator. First door on the right when you come out. You know the way, Kelso. He had to tell me where my own office was. Okay, keep moving, lover boy. The main 
So, Curtis, what is it you don't want me to see? Insured replacement value for the house is $900. Current value of the house and land is $3,500. Christ, how many of these dumps are we carrying on the books? There's got to be more in these files. Thirty-four degrees, four minutes, twenty-nine seconds north. One hundred eighteen degrees, seventeen minutes, fifty-eight seconds west. I have a Detective Phelps of the LAPD here to see you. Have a seat, Cole. Where's the go-between? She's awful easy on the eye for a foreign girl. Does that private dick patter actually work on anyone, Kelso? It's not your style. You were always a little more. Correct. This is your dime, officer. Would you have helped me if I asked, Jack? A little chuck on the shoulder, shot of Semprify. Fuck you, Cole. Be a man. Why send a woman to do your dirty work? You're a cop. Why do you want my help? I thought a PI might be a little more discreet. I'm no gumshoe. I used to be an investigator for this company before your investigation got me fired. Sorry to hear that, Jack. I'm sorry about a lot of things. Is that an apology, Cole? It's a feeble attempt at one, yes. Look, Jack, it's a murder case, and I need help to solve it. So what's it got to do with the Lesion Fields developments? They're in it somehow. The flyers keep turning up whenever I find a domestic fire. They're boosters. Stiffing GIs for deposits, making them wait months for a throw-up house. They're already making more money than they can count. What's turned them into killers? So you believe me? This is why you dragged me into the Buckwalter case. Look, Jack, I'm sorry. But if not for me, do it for some of the poor sacks who are dying. Or some of the leathernecks who are getting grifted. How about it, Jack? I know you, Cole. You're still beating yourself up over that metal on Sugarloaf. The medal you think you didn't deserve, but you just don't get it. Nobody deserves a medal. It's just the ridiculous situation you find yourself in and how you react to it. You think you failed up on that hill. But courage isn't a tap you can turn on or off. Courage isn't permanent. It's a tenuous and fickle thing. Courage and cowardice exist in every man. Get over it. You got it off your chest. I guess I have. Can you help me, Jack? I'm thinking about it. The Hall of Records is the place to start. I was hoping we'd be working together, but I guess not. You're coming home! Yay! I think it just saved, too. Let me enter the building. Oh yeah, this place. 
Is the chandelier gone? It looks like it is. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, I want to thank you guys for coming and watching us play, or watching me play. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, we may not be back until Sunday evening, because Saturday I'm going to go out of town to visit with my mom. So, I don't know. Depends on how I'm feeling when we get home. I don't know how late it'll be. But, uh, yeah. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And I guess your Saturday. <laughs> and I will see you guys when I see you. So, take care and have a good night. Bye-bye.